Good evening, saints. Uh, I want to thank the Lord for this opportunity that He has given each and one of us at this time to be alive. And this is an opportunity for us to continue um, worshiping God and repenting and making our ways right with Christ. I know we are living uh, in very difficult times. Life has totally changed from the norm. But even amidst all this, there is hope because the Word of God will never stop at any particular time. It has to continue. Now, today I want to reflect on a few things first, how this pandemic has affected our lives and the lessons it has taught us. For the first time, uh, we are discovering that it is actually possible to work from home. This is something that we never thought it is possible. We have also uh, learned a lesson that it is also possible to get the Word of God through the social media that we have not been using properly. But God this time round, He has made us use the social media in a better way. We are also learning that it is possible to remain in your country and survive there. Seek health in your own country. This is a lesson we've learned during this corona period. Now, we have seen a number of effects that have come with this pandemic. Among them, there has been a lot of job losses. We have had a number of uh, people take pay cuts or forced to take pay cuts because of uh, businesses not running normally. Unemployment levels have been seen to increase and dependency is also increasing and we have also witnessed lockdowns everywhere a number of counties which is a situation that uh, we've not experienced before and of course the only known medicine for corona stay at home amidst all this what is the lord telling us the lord is telling us do not fear in the book of isaiah 41 10 for i am with you in all these situations, the Lord is just telling us that He is with us. He has not forgotten us. And when we reflect on the story of Job, we actually see that God is with us. Job went through very difficult times on his uh, possessions and his health. That was the work of the devil. But he stood firm with God. And finally, God rewarded him in so many ways of everything he had lost. Meaning that God is still in control, even in, under this pandemic, God is in control. Let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, thank you for this evening. As uh, we begin this sharing, I invite your presence, use me to speak to your people. In Jesus Christ we pray and believe. Amen. Our sharing today is entitled, Go and Do Likewise. Go and Do Likewise, which is found in the book of Luke, chapter 10, verse 25 to 37. And this is the story of the Good Samaritan. Now, in this story of the Good Samaritan, it's a story that is well known to us. Uh, this story we had the uh, next part of the law who trying to test Jesus by asking him, what should he do to inherit the kingdom of God? And Jesus answered him correctly. Jesus was not short of answers and correct answers for that matter. He told him, you do as is written in the law. Remember, this guy is a law expert. And uh, when you look at the 
selection of words by Jesus, he could clearly read his mind. He told him, you should do as is written in the law. And what is written in the law is, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. The law expert in his wisdom, his earthly wisdom, he asked God, and who is my neighbor? Jesus answered him again through now the parable of the good Samaritan. I'll go through that story in brief because it's a story that is well known to us. But as I said, it's anchored in the book of Luke 10, chapter 25 to 30. Luke chapter 10, verse 25 to 37. And the story is short. It says, a man was going from Jerusalem to Jericho. Along the way, he found or met with robbers who clobbered him mercilessly and left, left him half dead. And shortly after, a priest passed by, looked at the man, and passed on the side. Then next, a Levite passed by, looked at this man who had been clobbered, left for dead, and looked the other way and left. And finally, a Samaritan, whom we call a good Samaritan, came. Now, why is this story very significant about this Samaritan? Samaritan, we should remember, were people who were half Jews, half Gentiles, and they earned their own mode of worship. They did not really know the true worship. But even in that situation, the good Samaritan was able to help this man. He came and wiped the bruises that he had gotten from the beating that he, he got from the robbers. In addition, he, 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 used, he, he, he made some uh, oil which he applied on his woods, took him to a hotel, and asked the hotel attendant to take care of this man, and he gave him some money to take care of him. He was given food, and later, as the Samaritan was leaving, he told him that take care of this man in case of any extra expenses, I would come and meet them. Look at that contradiction. This is a Samaritan who did not, go God, did not go know God very well, and the other two, uh, the Levite and the priest, just passed by. Now, the next thing Jesus told this man, now, the law expert, after being given the parable by Jesus himself, he asked him, now, who among three, this, among three, these three people did the right thing? And the law expert said, the one who had mercy on the man who had been crobbed by the robbers. And Jesus told him, go and do likewise. That's why my story is entitled Go and Do Likewise. Um, me and you have a duty at this time of a pandemic. We are not going to sit back and say there is nothing that we can do. Okay? Why? Because each and every one of us, God has given us an opportunity. It reflects in our very common hymn, number 359, which tells us in uh, some stanza that, let none hear you saying, there is nothing I can do. There is something you can do. God does not want to hear you saying, in this time of pandemic, there is nothing you can do. That vocabulary does not exist in the heavenly uh, dictionary. You have people all around us who need 
help in many ways. This is because of what I said earlier. People have lost jobs, and there are many people who have earned pay cuts. We have a lot of unemployment. And remember, Christ said this was one, this is one of the commandments that love thy neighbor as you love yourself. Therefore, as Christians, if you are not providing to the needy, you are breaking the law. That is how serious this is. And remember, in the book of First uh, John 3, 17 to 18, if it says, if anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and truth. That's what John is telling us. That we have possessions. And by the way, you cannot lie to your, to your God, nor to yourself. You know what you have, what God has given to you. Love thy neighbor as you love yourself, in this case would mean each and every day you are taking care of yourself, you are making sure you are clothed, you have a shelter, you have food. But what about that neighbor next to you? You, you are able to love him because you love yourself. That's what that commandment is saying. That love that you have for yourself is what should be extended to your neighbor. And we have seen in that story of Samaritan who a neighbor is. All the people in need are your neighbors. So don't look at the people next door and say, ah, these ones have everything. They have been uh, cooking, they have been uh, doing all the chores at home, and now you say these guys are okay. Those are not your neighbors. The neighbors, according to the description by Jesus himself, is anyone in need. Further, we look at the book of Matthew, chapter 25, 35 to 40, which I will not go through it all, I just read a bit of it. For I was angry, and, gave, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked af after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. That's Jesus talking. And the righteous will answer. Note. It says the righteous will answer. That means you need to examine yourself as even you provide to your neighbor. Did you do this righteously? Or you were just looking for fame? How did you do this? And will it take, to he take you to heaven? You must be righteous. You must put your life right with Christ. And the Lord will answer to them that... Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters, you did them for me. That is a wonderful message that when you are doing these things, you are real brothers and sisters, you are doing these things to Christ himself. And remember, going back to where we began, this is a commandment that God has given to us. And in the book of James 2 verse 10, it says, Anyone who breaks any of the laws is guilty of them all. So if truly you are a Christian, a righteous man, you cannot purport to be keeping the other commandments and leaving one. Why? Because righteousness will make you keep all the commandments. If you find yourself leaving one behind, then the truth of God is not with you. And therefore, we need to scrutinize ourselves as we, sorry, as we do these things and be able to know who is leading us. As I come to a close, I will reflect on this story of Samaritan during this pandemic. We have seen the government coming in to lower taxes for all the citizens. We have seen budgets that have been made for the disabled and the elderly, and medical scheme provided to the doctors. That is a Samaritan 
our way of doing things. We have also seen a lot of support coming all the way from far countries to support our country during this pandemic. We have also seen a number of organizations locally coming out and supporting the needy in a big way. Now, the question here is that I want to leave you with, what are you doing, you and me, as an individual? You do not have to do a big thing. The Samaritan story is a story that exists in the Bible for all these years because of a Samaritan just helping one man, and he saved his life. Don't look at the masses. Look at the neighbor. You do not have to go looking for a big number, like what the government has done, like with the donations we have gotten. No, you have a part to play in a small way, like the Samaritan. To remind you of a story that you may be familiar with of the hummingbird, the hummingbird story goes this way. Uh, the hummingbird realized there was a big fire burning in a bush nearby, big fire consuming everything. And the hummingbird decided to go fetch water using its beak, would fly to the nearby river, fetch some little water, come and release it on the forest. And he kept on doing that and on and off and on, going for water, coming back, going for water, coming back. Now, what does this teach us? It's a short story as that. It may have seemed like the hummingbird was doing nothing, but it is a story of Samaritan Samaritan. The little that you can do, do it in this time. Do not count whatever you are able to do and say there is nothing you can do. There is a lot you can do, like the hummingbird. We are facing a burning bush here during the corona period, like the burning bush of the hummingbird. And as we are facing this burning bush of corona pandemic, you have a part to play. You need to provide to the needy. You need to preach to them the word of God. And you also need to continue nurturing yourself wherever you are, in your house, those who may be going to work, everywhere you go, the gospel of the kingdom has not stopped. And it will never stop until the second coming of Jesus Christ. Therefore, go and do likewise. May the Almighty Father continue to bless you during this period that we are facing, the challenges we are facing. Amen. I want us to just sing one stanza here as I close of the song, Does Jesus Care? Song number 181. Does Jesus care when my way is dark with a nameless dread and fear? And the daylight fades into deep night shades. Does he care enough to be near? Oh yes, he cares, I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief. When the days are weary, the long nights dreary, I know my Savior cares. Yes, Jesus cares amidst all these challenges that we are facing. Let's bow down for a word of prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, thank you for speaking to us this evening. Thank you for the listeners that are going to benefit from this sharing. May you continue, Lord, abiding in us during these times that we are facing. Lord, it's not by accident that what is happening is happening. You knew it because you are all-knowing. Above all, Lord, you have promised us in the book of Isaiah 41.10 that we should not fear, for we, our hope is built of, on nothing less but Jesus himself. And therefore, being the Alpha and Omega, why should we fear? 
because you are with us in all situations, even during persecutions, Lord, you are with us and your name will continue being glorified. At this time, Lord, as we continue taking the precautions that we have been asked to take, Lord, those precautions alone may not work without your presence. We invite your presence because we are fighting an unseen enemy who you can see clearly. We pray for our children. We pray for our church members. We pray for the global uh, worship that we have in all levels and up to general conference. We also pray for the entire world that they may realize, Lord, that during this time of pandemic, it is time to come near to you when they are locked down in their houses. They have a better environment, a quiet environment to be able to scrutinize more about your word and come to you even closer. Thank you for the organization of this church. Thank you for everything that you've done to us. Thank you for the good health. In Jesus Christ we pray and believe. Amen.